What's up everyone, welcome to the Durbin Compound. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Devin Durbin. I'm here to bring you the tools, tips, and tricks to make you more self-sufficient. In today's video, we're going over the Shocker Hitch, and this is the Shocker Hitch HD. So you will notice the difference between Shocker Hitch uh, HD and the regular one is one is red, the HD is black. So in today's video, we're gonna go over my one year review of this hitch, just what I think about it, um, some of the eases of use, the versatility of it and just overall how it performs on the truck. So I hope you guys stay tuned. Okay, so you're here for the review of the Shocker HD hitch. So this is a hitch unlike any other. It has the airbag on the back of it. It is a very, very uh, sturdy hitch. It is very heavy. I think this thing's like uh, probably 60 pounds all in. You can get different uh, different ball mounts for it, drop and rise. I will show you guys that out on the uh, outside on the truck. Um, I've been running this for a year. All in this setup was just south of a thousand bucks. I think the hitch itself is going for like 800, uh, maybe 750. Um, so then when you add tax, you're looking at 800 bucks. And then each of these mounts is like 100 to $110. So for my setup with the hitch and two bowl mounts, I'm in it around a thousand bucks. I'm not sponsored by Shocker Hitch. I'm only gonna, you know, uh, I'm only going to tell you the truth here around the channel. I was really, really uh, frustrated when I got this hitch initially. I'll just say it first that I was really frustrated with this hitch initially because the powder coating was so thick on the shank back here. So I actually had to grind down the shank and grind all the powder coating off of the shank. I'll roll in some B-roll here of me having to grind it down, but I had to do extensive grinding all the way around this shank in order for it to actually go in the receiver. And so me and Jordan just pulled it out of the truck and we still had to pull it out with a toe strap on a telephone pole. It's still so tight that it won't go anywhere. That's great because somebody can't just take your pin out and pull your hitch out like, awesome, nobody can steal my $1,000 hitch. But when you pay the money for this kind of hitch, I really, really like it to be plug and play. I like to be able to unbox it and put it right in the truck. This is a two and a half inch shank, so it goes in Super Duties and some of the bigger Class 5 trucks. Um, so I had to do some extensive grinding on it. I guess if I didn't have a grinder, it would have been a lot big of a, a lot more of a big deal. But you know, I still had to grind on it. So I had a grinder. I was able to make it happen. I was frustrated in the moment, but this hitch has definitely been a workhorse for me, and it's on my truck every day, getting use. So now let's go for a ride, and I'll show you exactly how the truck acts when uh, the hitch is on it and exactly you know what to expect when you're going down the road and what this is doing behind the truck. All right guys, so during this portion of the video, I wanted to ride along in the truck with you um, so that you could see what the hitch is doing as we're going down the road. Now, I live on a very rural country road and there is a lot of dips and dodges and dive and dip, dodge, dive. You know, all kinds of little uh, imperfections in the road that really put this hitch to work. Um, it's it's really nice and really smooth uh, for going through here. Uh, I know that it definitely takes the bucking out of the trailer. Like you can still feel that the trailer's back there. Um, I think this trailer is around 6,500 pounds with everything in it. And so it, it's, it's fairly heavy for a box trailer, but it definitely smooths out the ride and you don't have a lot of bucking and you know that harsh feel that you usually have when towing a trailer. So, I mean, what do you think about it, Jordan? Oh, I think it rides smooth um, compared to other trailers. You know, you hook up to and go down roads like this that are real bumpy and stuff. You know, you get a lot of, a lot of this going on, but with this, you know, it feels yeah. a lot better. I guess you could almost compare it to like, Driving, driving a vehicle with regular suspension versus like an air ride suspension. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you can definitely feel that it's there. You just don't get that that uh, that front to back motion. You yeah. you can feel the trailer bouncing on, on the oh, hitch, yeah. but you don't feel it like actually bucking the truck. You know, bucking the truck. Yeah. 
uh, and that's what I really like about it is it really smooths it out it kind of gives it that that uh, that smooth feel instead of that uh, 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 you know to kind of like a I was gonna say kind of like a sine wave but you know it's uh, getting nerdy but yeah I think it definitely makes a huge difference is it worth the money though I think it is um, just for the overall usability of the hitch I think it's definitely worth the money so uh, next we're going to show you guys uh, what it's like to switch out the ball and switch between different trailers uh, because I think that's one feature that's kind of underrated for a lot of things is is the ease of use so let's go talk about ease of use Okay, what I like most about this hitch is that the versatility of it. So you have a bunch of different selections here on the side and whether or not you're running a drop hitch or a raise hitch. So I have two different trailers. I have a box trailer that I keep on the second hole down and this is a, I think it's called a four inch drop, a four inch drop between the top of the bracket and where the ball sits or something like that. On Shocker's website, you'll see that, but it's as easy as taking these roll pins out and swapping the hitch out. So if you need to do any micro adjustments, you don't need to worry about where your trailer's really sitting. So if you needed to kind of, kind of just uh, tweak it to make sure that your axles are more level, you can go down a notch and then hook the trailer back up. If you were in a situation where the trailer couldn't be moved, you can drop this out from underneath the trailer ball. So, you know, you, you have your hitch here and you could take your pins out and just drop this out. And then now you have your truck parked at the same spot where it was on the ball, but now it's not on the ball. You have a dump trailer that needs a raise instead of a uh, drop. They sell a different style of bracket here, which is a raise. So if I want to hook up my dump trailer, I just put it in the bottom, bottom hook there or bottom uh, pin there, and then I put in my second pin, and we're ready to rock and roll for the dump trailer that needs a rise instead of fall. So really, really versatile. It's got an easy Schrader valve on it that we'll show you next um, on how to preload it so that uh, it will be set up for the different trailer. So the dump trailer loaded down is a lot heavier than my box trailer that I use for my tools. So I have to air up the airbag a little bit more for the dump trailer. And we'll go over there and show you that next. Okay, so there's a Schrader valve on the side of this airbag and you simply screw in any inflator that you want. The max air pressure on this bag is 100 PSI. So I just screw in my, uh, my bag and on here I'm at 11 and a half PSI. So the only thing or the only pressure I need for my tool trailer is 11 and a half PSI, which isn't a lot. It, ma it makes for a really nice cushioned ride. So obviously this dump trailer is a little heavier, but we're going to set it on the ball and I'll show you the articulating bumper here. So when we come down, you can see this bumper here in the in the top is loose. So this bumper needs to be compressed in order for it to do its job. So this is basically a limiting bumper. So if the shocker hitch were to, let me see if I can get it to articulate. See, it, it has some bouncing back and forth when you're on the road and you probably saw that in the video, but we want to compress this bumper here. So all I do is turn up my, turn up my compressor and I'll run it until this bumper is compressed uh, yeah, about an eighth of an inch. And then I stop it. And now our PSI of our bag is at 20 PSI. And it's ready to rock and roll for this load. So if you have a small compressor like this, um, you can obviously keep it at the highest pressure that you need. So if you're always running a single, uh, a single trailer, and you know exactly what it needs to be, you can just run it at that PSI, you don't need to go back and forth. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll pressurize this to make sure it's nice and tight for the dump trailer, and then I'll put it over on the tool trailer and not even think anything of it, and it's ready to rock and roll. This thing's been on here for a year, uh, and I don't have anything bad to say about it. 
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you learned something new about the Shocker Hitch. And if you're looking at the purchase, if you're looking at spending the money, I highly recommend, I give it two thumbs up. Um, and I don't think you can go wrong with this. I've been running it hard for about a year and it's been really, really good for me. So I would definitely recommend that you spend your hard earned money on it too. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you guys are into. And we'll see you guys in the next video.